Welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is a new video series. I am going to call it .NET Return Test Questions and Answers Video Series. All the questions that you will see in this video series are the questions that many of our YouTube channel subscribers have faced in the return test that they have attended. So if you have attended a .NET Return Test and if you want some questions to be answered, please feel free to leave those questions as comments on this YouTube channel and then I shall go ahead and record and upload a video answering those questions as soon as I can. So this is part one of .NET Return Test Questions and Answers video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to retrieve data from different databases in an ASP.NET Web Forms application. Let's understand this with an example. Let's say we have got two different databases, USADB and UKDB. USADB, let's say, for example, it is going to store US employee data and UKDB is going to store UK employee data. So let's say within both of these databases, we have got this employees table and here this table is going to store US employees data and this table is going to store UK employees data. Notice the country column and then what we want to do is implement an ASP.NET Web Forms application and probably we want to use a grid view control which is going to display data from both of these databases. So we want this ASP.NET Web Forms application to retrieve data from USADB, UKDB, merge it and then display within the grid view control. Notice that the first four columns, look at the country column, USA, meaning those four rows are coming from this DB. And the last three rows, look at the country column, it's UK. So those three rows are coming from this DB. So let's see how to retrieve data from different databases within this ASP.NET Web Forms application. So the first thing that we need to do is create these two databases, create the employees table, and populate the tables with some sample data. And to speed things up, I have already implemented the required SQL script. So here, if you look at this script right here, these lines are going to create USADB and UKDB databases. And then, um, you know, this script right here is going to create employees table within USADB database. And then this script right here is going to populate this employees table within USADB database with sample data. And then this script right here is going to create employees table within the UK database. And then this script is going to populate the employees table with sample data. All right, so I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. I have already executed the script. So I have the UKDB and USADB and within both the databases, we have got this employees table. Okay, uh, let's execute these two select statements to make sure that, you know, we get the data that we expect. So this data is from the USADB database and this data is from the UKDB database. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So here, all I have done so far is created a new empty ASP.NET Web Forms application. And then I have added this Web Form 1.aspx. Okay. First, within the web.config file, let's go ahead and include connection strings for USADB and UKDB databases. Okay. So let's go ahead and include connection strings section. And then we want to add a connection string. And let's specify a name. Uh, for our connection string first. And let's call this as UA, USA DB. And you know, within the con connection string, we need to have the server. Uh, in this case, in my case, the server is running on my local machine. So I'm going to specify dot as the server. And database is going to be USADB, that's what is the name of the database. And then I'm going to use Windows Authentication. So I'm going to say integrated security is equal to true. All right, so we need to do the same thing for UKDB. So we are adding another connection string and let's call this UKDB. And here the name of the database is going to be UKDB. Okay, so we've got two connection strings within the web.config file. Now let's go to webform1.aspx and then first of all, let's, you know, set the style attribute here. Let's specify font family style and let's set that to area. And then within the div tag, let's drag and drop a grid view control. Grid view control must be under the data tab. So let's go ahead, 
drag and drop it and now let's flip to the design mode and then just to make it look nice let's auto format it and let's select this uh, colorful scheme all right so within the code behind file within the page load event now we need to write adio.net code to connect to these two databases and retrieve data and then display that within a single grid view control so we need some of the adio.net namespaces the first one is system.configuration namespace so this namespace contains configuration manager class uh, which helps us read the connection strings from web.config file and the next uh, namespace that we need is system.data and system.data.sql client. Alright, so now the first thing is to read the connection strings from web.config file. So I'm going to call this variable as USADBCS. CS stands for connection string. So this variable is USADB connection string. And how do we read the connection string? We use configuration manager class dot connection strings property and then if you recollect the name of the USADB connection string is USADB so let's copy that and paste it right here and retrieve the connection string out of it okay and we also need to retrieve the UKDB connection string so let's go ahead and do that so UKDB connection string and the name of the database is going to be I mean, uh, sorry, the name of the connection string within our web.config file is going to be UKDB. Okay, so at this point, we have the two connection strings. Now, the next step is to create a SQL connection to one of the databases. So let's go ahead and create a connection object. So SQL connection con equals new SQL connection. And the first thing that we need to specify here to create a connection object is to use the connection string. So let's go ahead and establish a connection to the USA database. Okay, and then we are going to make use of SQL data adapter so that we don't have to explicitly open and close connections. So SQL data adapter DA equals new SQL data adapter and we are going to make use of this overloaded constructor where we can specify the select command as string and the and we can pass the SQL connection object as well. So the select command is simply going to be select star from employees okay so we are going to retrieve all the rows that are there in the employees table and the next parameter is the SQL connection object so we are going to pass this SQL connection object at the moment this connection object is pointing to USADB meaning we are going to retrieve data from the USADB okay so now what we are going to do is create a data set object so let's call it um, DS1 And then let's invoke the fill method of the data adapter and fill this data set one with the data from USADB. So by the time the code has reached this point within the data set, we have US employees data within the data set. Now what we need to do, uh, let's go ahead and reuse the same connection object. So we want to connect to UK database and retrieve UK employees data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create again a new connection object here so basically to the same connection object we are assigning a new instance and this time I'm going to make use of this UKDB uh, connection string so now this connection object is actually uh, going to open a connection to UKDB because that's what is the connection string we are using okay and then what we need to do is we need to tell this data adapter object to use this connection object which which is a new connection object that is pointing to you know UK database and to do that I'm going to say data adapter dot select command and the select command has got the connection property where we can specify the connection that we want to use to execute the select command what is our select command the select command is not going to change because within both of the databases the table name is employees and exactly we want the same command to be executed so there's no point in changing the select command itself but in your case if you have different tables and if you want to retrieve you know table uh, data from department uh, table and employees table then you would change the select command as well but in our case we don't have to do that so I'm going to set here this connection object okay so we are done now 
this connection object is pointing to UK database and this data adapter is using that connection object. So obviously this command will be executed against the UK DB. So we will get UK uh, employees data. So what I'm going to do here is create another data set and let's call it DS2 equals new data set. And then we are going to invoke the fill method and then fill data set 2 with UK employees data. So at this point within DS1 we have got US employees data and within DS2 we have got UK employees data. Now we want to merge them together and it's very easy to merge data sets. All you need to do is uh, on the data set instance invoke the merge method and then pass the second data set. So what is going to happen here, the data that is present within data set 2 will be merged into data set 1. And then all that is left is set the data set 1 as the data source for the grid view control and then invoke the data bind method. Okay, so data set 1 contains now both US and UK employees uh, details. That's what we have set as the data source, invoke the data bind method. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works as expected. There we go. So the first four rows, notice that country is USA, last three rows UK. So we got data from different databases. This is exactly the same code that we have written right now. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.